Greetings, dear ones. I am crying of magnetic service. There would be those who would say that this could not be done in this fashion so fast. It would be that the entity who is human would take on the mantle of spirit that another entity would come crashing through. <laughs> but they don't know what has happened this day. You see, I've always been here. I was here when he started, you know. My partner in the latest years have allowed me to sneak through and some of you have felt me even during his supposed talk. I'm there. And you can see it coming and going. And if you did, then you know what is possible with spirit. Not that you would break into channel, but the higher self of you would be so present and so available that you're within those frames of references where you need it, it comes crashing through. And then you see the love of God and there you see the wisdom, oh, the entourage is here. We didn't have to wait too long for them either. Let me tell you the mechanics of what takes place here. I am Cryon, an angelic energy that is family to you. I know your name, I know who's here. I know who's here, I know the reasons you came. I know that because in the quantum hologram, all is known. <laughs> you notice I call it the quantum hologram. It's a sacred place, an interdimensional aspect of all angelic beings, even those in lesson in this expression on the planet that we would know all about you. Oh, family, I'm not here to preach to you. I'm not here even to give you guidance. Well, family, I'm just here to sit in this reunion, have a, have a chat by the fire, that's all I want. At some level, I'd love you to know me. At some level, I'd like you to remember me and see my colors there at the stage. And some of you, even those of you who see colors will know it's here and they will appear during this time. Some of you will be able to see the entities around my partner, Lee. I don't come to preach to you. I want to wash your feet. From one family member to another, I want to say thank you for being on this planet, for saying yes again. I was with you when you came in at the wind of birth, at that point in, in time where the soul completely and totally meets the human being, which is at birth. I was here for that when you finally, the last parts and pieces of you left the other side of the veil and all of you showed up here and your, your higher self is kept apart from you. The angelic self was kept apart from you. That is what is the mystery, is it not? How to recombine with the divinity and that's what you're studying and that's the study that I've given my partner. It is in the DNA. You know what that study is about? It's becoming you and whole. That's what it is. It's not... It's not about the names. There's an entourage that pops in here today. A different than the, you, than the one that, that has come before. It's always different, you know. For those of you who want to, you can feel them. My partner will say, how spooky do you want to get? And I'll say to you, if you want to step out there, I guarantee you'll feel them. They'll touch you on the shoulder, perhaps on the knees. Areas that don't distract you, but just say, I'm here. Like they were standing behind you with their hands on your shoulders in support. That's the perception, as though they were that size and they're not. They have no size, that's hard to explain. They have energy. They're interdimensional. Some of them represent the indigenous who you plowed the ground with. <laughs> well, I'm talking to you and you know it. Some of them are those you loved and lost. Uh, there's a small child here. It belongs to you. And you 
know who I'm talking to also. That child is always with you. Did you know that, dear? Did you know that? And all through your sorrow of a loss, the child was there. Did you know that? The child is there for life. Not in human form, but as a guide. And as someone who loves you so much, you never lost them, really. Not at the level that is important. All these things residing in your DNA. Did you understand what my partner in his motor mouth way wanted to get across to you? <laughs> Divinity is what you make it. Awaken the parts. Indeed, each of you is different. Awaken the parts that are most appropriate in your life. That's what takes place. And the things you need to learn the first are the things that awaken the first. And you don't have to draw a map and you don't have to figure it out yourself any more than you, you have to figure out how the internal combustion engine works in your auto before you get in. You don't need the manual, you just get in, don't you? And we're saying to you that you don't need the manual here either. It is just drivable. It's a human experience begging to be manifest. Who is God? Indeed. Touch the face of God today, if you will, by going inside and looking at who you are. Would you have the courage to do that? There is a series of cosmic energies will call laws that are my favorite and there are of course seven <laughs> and I've given them before I've asked my, my partner to give them one more time this is the last a little different this time for the group who's here to be recorded this time where it was not before. Profound they are, for they tell a story. Even in numerological terms, they tell a story. Seven cos uh, cosmic laws of cryon. Perfectly human laws. They have to do with who you are. <coughs> what happens when you take the energy of spirit and run with it? What happens to you when you do? Beautiful they are. And some of them may seem like a review. And some of them are new, but they've never been put together like this for you. My partner tells me I'm stalling. Begin, he says. Why don't you begin, he says. I'll tell you why I don't begin yet, because there's unfinished business right now, right now. There's a light worker on the edge, realizing why they came, realizing that this is indeed real, they feel the touch of God. <laughs> oh, it's easy to sit there and listen to the voice and say it's the human being, isn't it? It's a lot harder, is it not, to touch the face of God. What if this were true? An entity from beyond the veil loves you so much. An allowance that you would let them come see you. That is what is taking place, a reunion strong one. I promise my partner the strongest channeling year of his life is coming. There will be lessons for him and he knows it. And there will be challenges and he knows it. And he's reached the point where he celebrates all of them. Because he knows that he's got a family who stands with him, and so do you. And I speak to the one who's on the edge. We 
because this is your life lesson, is it not? Trust yourself. Can you do it? Before this channeling is over, dear one, you have the support of all of these in the room, these healers, these who are concerned, you all are concerned with one another. Bless the humanity who is here. That is what it has in common. It loves one another. It has the seeds in it for peace on earth. That's what it has in common. So many of it, Lemurian, all of it, old soul energy, even the drag along. <laughs> old soul energy. You may not want to awaken this time. That's up to you. You know that. I know who you are. You can't hide it. Shaman. <laughs> I've said that before, quite often. The most profound doubters in the audience are the shamans. Ones who don't really want to go there this time because they know how much work it is. <laughs> and so they'll sit this one out. Maybe. Cosmic law number one. You could never return to a less aware state. <laughs> that may be obvious, but it isn't truly. You can't unknow anything. Even though you have free choice as a human being, you cannot unknow anything. Go ahead, I dare you. <laughs> Somebody tells you something. A fact that's... You didn't know that before. I challenge you to unknow it suddenly. Consciously wipe it away. You cannot. Oh, you might say, well, eventually I might forget it. Oh, yeah. But right now, since you know it, go ahead, unknow it. You can't. You can't delete it from the file, can you? <laughs> Impossible. Well, why am I telling you that? Because the energies of knowledge that flow into your DNA spiritually and fill up the jar of spirituality in you, which we'll speak of in a moment, becomes responsibility. And because you cannot unknow anything, I tell you this, be careful, be, be, be careful before you decide to know it. <laughs> you may be one of those who is in quest of knowledge. And you've come to a meeting like this, I will say, at this juncture, be careful what you ask for. Because once the knowledge pours in, you can't unknow it. Well, Karen, what if we decide to ignore it? Well, that's another story, isn't it? Those who ignore spiritual truth are in denial. One in denial is an unbalanced human being. You can't go forward, you can't go back. And through your own doing, you then are stuck. Be careful. If this is not for you, and for some it is not, not yet. Don't make the steps we speak about. Don't conjure up your intent. But if you are one who does and wants to and it's ready for you, I'll tell you it's ready here tonight. There's no better time to know things that are unknowable and unseeable and unforgettable in an interdimensional way than now. Know the unknowable. Oh, crying to speak in such riddles. How can you know the unknowable? Now I speak of the bridge between 3D and the rest of them. There are things you absolutely cannot know in 3D that you absolutely can in an interdimensional state. And therefore that begs you to get on that bridge and straddle it, does it not? for the rest of your life. And some of you do, and some of you are. And like any other balancing act, it becomes doable. Moving between the worlds of interdimensionality and sacredness and practicality in 3D. There are those who would say, I cannot be spiritual and still do the work I do. <coughs> yes, you can. There is a marriage there that 3D has not allowed you to think of. 
And then again, I say this, what if you're there just for those around you so that they could know the energy of a light worker and a balanced human being, even though you think you're doing things that don't matter? Maybe it's about those around you. Do not make up your mind in advance what God has for you are the reasons you're doing things. That's number one. You can't unknow anything. Therefore, be careful what you ask for. The second one is this. It's difficult to describe, but the duality has been structured so strongly within you that you must look for the divine to find it. You have intuition when you're born that there is a creator and that there is a God. And many of you, as my partner described, will go find something to worship. And you will be happy in that, for it then satisfies the gene, does it not, of curiosity. If indeed there is a gene of sacred curiosity, it satisfies it. You're worshiping it. It must be okay. Oh, but there's so much more. So the second cosmic law is this. At the center of your DNA, there is divinity. But it will not show itself unless you ask. <laughs> you might say that duality, therefore, is biased in the wrong direction. But if you never ask, you'll never know. And yet we say to you, this to you, that the bias is not as great as you think because there's always the intuition, is there not, to propel you forward. So the good side is that there is intuition. The negative side, if you want to see it that way, is you've got to look for it to find the core. This is duality at its best, finely balanced for you as human beings. You've got to look for it. That is why there is not more of you. When you're dealing with these things, old souls, you're going to be the first to understand when I tell you, Lemurian, that these things are not for everyone. I'm going to tell you in a moment about the Akash and your spirituality. I will tell you and it will explain why there are a finite number of those who are waking up right now on this planet, why you're not going to have all humanity become light workers, And then you're going to understand but the second cosmic law is that duality hides divinity and always will. You've got to go look for it to find it. It explains a great deal of why the human race does not race out and find the things that we speak of, does not automatically see interdimensional colors, does not find itself interested in the cosmic things. There you are. That was number two. Number three. Oh, number three, it's going to sound ordinary. Eighteen years ago, when I presented myself to my partner, I gave him a phrase. A phrase. The first phrase I said to him was, fear not. And the second phrase I gave him, that he'll have his entire life, is the third cosmic law. Number three is a catalyst, you know. Number two is duality, you know. <laughs> Number three is a catalyst and it says this. Something that stays the same and changes anything it touches. Here's the phrase I gave him, you are dearly loved. Sounds too ordinary. You've seen it many times if you have been with my energy. For he's printed it everywhere. Sometimes he writes it as notes to others. And I always tell him before he goes to sleep. When he comes to that place, that twilight area, where he has one foot in each side of the veil, and I say, remember Lee, you're dearly loved. And the third cosmic law <laughs> is that your family loves you beyond measure. 
And there's no such thing as a family or an angel or a God who delights in your suffering or who wants you to do something that will cause pain. It simply is not the truth. I never let anyone tell you those kinds of things. Oh, there are challenges that we will ask you to walk through that will enhance your life. But we're going to stand next to you because we love you. And we're going to be the team because you need it there and you'll never be alone and you're dearly loved. And that's different from asking you to be alone and suffer and and go through difficult times alone without support. We never would do that, ever would do that because you're dearly loved. And if you carry anything out of here, can you feel the love of God in your life? I want to make it sticky. I want to make it so thick here. I want to warm the room up right now. I want to warm the room up press upon you. I want to show the colors on the stage right now. For those of you who want to see them, they're here. Some of you might even see the entity standing next to Lee. If you are a seer, you know who that is. And I'm going to tell you this, dear human being, that what is taking place right now is real. It is true. It is sacred. It is a safe place to be because the love of God is here placed upon your life. Third cosmic law. The catalyst of love. You're here, you're being touched. Oh, there are there there are those listening to this right now. I tell you, I know who you are. You say, Well, how could you? It hasn't happened yet. It's happening right now. Don't you know that? Live listen to me, listener. Do you think this isn't real? <laughs> Where do you think you are right now? Well, I'm here too, and I'm talking to you, even though in your time frame it doesn't seem right, does it? Well, it's all happening at the same time. I've got a lot of human beings sitting in front of me, listener. I'm going to ask you to join them right now. If you haven't been into this yet, now's the time to come in, because we just talk about the third cosmic law, and you're part of it. Anyone who touches this information in any form, I invite you to feel the love in your heart right now because family is that way. That's what we want to do. We want to reach out and touch you. And we want you, before you would leave the place where you're sitting, to feel it. To know that this is a real thing happening. It was made up by my partner. He really has nothing to do with it except he allows me in to speak to you in these ways. In this chat we're having, let me tell you about number four. And this one you're going to like. If you haven't heard this, you're going to like it. And it goes like this. This is for you. Everything you are learning spiritually right now in this lifetime, all of the challenges, all the things that you have been through, never have to be repeated again in any life to come. Everything you've experienced as a learning in any past life you have ever had on this planet, Lemurian, you have now. And you never have to relearn any of it. The energy becomes more sophisticated as it is increased in these end times. There is much to know. But some of you are propelled to it only because You have learned it before you got here in another life. I have this postulate, number four, this cosmic law. Learning is forever. You never have to start over. Isn't that good? (laughs) And I'll say it again. There are many who we've heard say, Oh, if I have to do this again, if I have to go through this again, I'm never coming back. (laughs) Yes, you are. But you never have to go through it again. You're right, you don't. This is a spiritual DNA attribute. But it is packed with free choice. And that is to say this, doubter, we say it again. That even though you may be a shaman, you have free choice not to open that jar of knowledge. You don't have to do anything. It's all about what you wish to do. But here is the promise to all of those of you thinking about going to the next level. 
is that when you open that jar and let it out, all of the knowledge of the ages pours from you. You see it today in the young children you have called indigo. Some of it is scary to you. How can they have that wisdom, you say? They're not old enough. They haven't been through the things I have, and yet they're teaching me, I'll tell you, because their spiritual jar is filled with old soul energy. That's why. It's forever. It's good news. And you never have to move backwards. Oh, you may choose to, and then you'll be in denial. <laughs> but that human being who learns those things stores it away in that spiritual jar and never, ever will it go away. That was number four. Number five. Difficult to speak of, it is. When you start the journey of ascension, which has many names, through pure intent, it's the activation of the DNA. That's ascension. To some, it is taking what is called the neutral implant. We used that many years ago. It is therefore the implantation of permission to change, is it not? Permission to change. Let it be known that the fifth cosmic law, five, meaning change, is this. That when you push on that door and you start the knowledge of ascension, you give permission for spirit, God, whatever that means to you, to change the things around you. Don't do this unless you mean it. The room is filled with those who have had change around them. There are five of you, oddly enough, <laughs> who sit on the bridge of change right now. And you're asking, do I or don't I? Do I or don't I? I know who's here. Don't you think we love you enough you can step over that and start the process? Do you doubt God? No, I know you don't. But human duality is very strong. And it'll always be there to poke you. And give you fear. It'll always be there to remind you that you're a fool. <laughs> but it's a liar. And that's its job. How many of you have the courage to celebrate the duality? Thank you, duality, for what you do to me. For you make me aware of what I don't want anymore. <laughs> and that is indeed crossing the bridge, is it not? You get to the other side of that bridge, you've handled the duality. Get behind me, you say. I'll do the driving now, you say. It never goes away like a child, a misbehaving child in the back seat. It'll always let you know it's there. But it's no longer in front of your vision. It's an irritant behind you. I've channeled this many times. It was spoken again yet in this room by my partner today to one. And I channel it yet again for that's where he got it. So number five the postulate, the cosmic law, is that all of the changes that you have as you walk your path, you give permission for when you start the path. And the most difficult thing you can do, and the most sacred thing that is recognized is to celebrate the challenge and the change. It puts a new spin of energy on it. Completely. When you have the courage to celebrate these difficult changes, what you do is bless them. And your DNA, your cellular structure, handles them differently. Because the boss, which is you, has blessed them. If they're irritants, if you don't like them, if they're negative, if they bother you, that's the bag you have put them into. And all of your cellular structure says, well, that's a bad bag and we'll work with it accordingly. Start celebrating the difficulties and see what happens and how 
how your body reacts. Sadness, fear, worry. All of these things, these, these human things, drama, will take a back seat. They won't push upon you in any degree. Oh, you may have a day of it. That's all the duality gets one day. I'm telling you something that I want you to remember. Don't ever think you're sliding backwards. The duality may capture you for a day, but I'm gonna tell you by the time you wake up the next morning, you got control of it. Some of you get it down to 10 minutes. <laughs> the ascended ones in the room know of us when I speak. And you can say, get away from me fear. Get away from me sorrow and sadness. Are you a sensitive creature? Could words hurt you? And the answer is, of course they can. Because all of you are sensitive. But how would you like to have an armor against that? And when somebody calls you a name or criticizes you for something you've done, instead of a reaction, what you get is curiosity. Could they be right? <laughs> how many of you do that? <laughs> Not many. The masters do. Look for that, a change in you. So that when somebody points at you and says, here's what's wrong with you, you're ready to say, I'm listening, maybe I'll learn something. Instead of, oh, I don't wanna hear this. My partner learned that. Change, permission, it's part of the package. So when you sit, in some of your sorrow about what is taking place and the changes in your life, I have something to tell you. There's a lot of angels celebrating in the next room. And the invitation is to join them or not. It's very human of you to wallow in what you believe is your sorrow during a time you should be celebrating. We see it every day. And then later, of course, when it's all over, then you celebrate. You say, oh, I didn't know that. Well, maybe the next time you can say, well, I think I will know that in advance. And I'll choose to celebrate with the angels in the other room. That was number five. Number six. I'll tell you this. Hard for you to understand. There are trillions and trillions of cells in your body. Microscopic, they are. They all have DNA in them. And yet, when something happens in your body, for instance, such as fear, the whole body reacts, doesn't it? Even your elbow knows when you're afraid, do you know that? Sweats a little too. It's a whole body experience, you know. When you cut yourself and you go into a shock situation, your whole body is participating in the cut, is it not? And that is because of a situation where the body is connected in ways that you don't even understand. There are interdimensional connections of DNA that go far, far beyond the synapse. Now, why am I telling you this? Because there is something similar, greater, harder even to describe to you in the spiritual realm. The quantum holy grams is where you are at a spiritual level. And I would like to tell you something, dear one. When you push on that door and you move into ascension status, when you have a victory in your life, when you celebrate something profound, when you move into a status that you were not before, when you find God in you, the whole spiritual body knows it. God knows it. You tend to think of yourself as a grain of sand on a spiritual beach that's endless. One angel in a sea of angels. And that's very 3D of you. But what you don't see is that there is no such thing as a grain of sand. 
on a spiritual beach. It is a piece of God, a cell of many. And what happens to it, everyone knows. The sixth spiritual law, a sacred one, is this. Is that as you grow, the universe knows who you are. More than knows who you are. At some level, you have a team experience. Every single time you move from place to place, you can sit in a closet and you can pretend you're alone and the universe knows and celebrates with you the victory you've had. When you move beyond doubt and sorrow and fear, the universe has a party. That's the only way I can tell you. It's the only thing I can tell you that may make sense to the 3D mind. It's a whole body experience for the universe. And they all know it. But what does that mean to you? It means you are not alone. Just try to be alone. You can't do it. Impossible it is. And we've told you this before. We celebrate the victories in the room. Now let's talk about that. I know who's here. Some of you have come from fresh, come from victories. I know who's here. And you're glowing because you've made decisions. And things happen. Small, perhaps. Very significant. The whole universe celebrates with you. You all know it. When you strike your light and begin to send it to those places like to Sudan, which needs it right now. Are you willing to send your light to Africa? Have you ever been there? No. How would you like to go there? Right now. Your light can go there right now. And when you choose to do that, the universe knows you've done it. And that's what makes that light so powerful. Cosmic intelligence that quantum hologram is activated. You get cosmic intelligence in the light, not just you sending light by force to some place. Oh no, you strike the light and stand back. Let us do the rest. But it has to come from the human. It has to be a pure intent. It has to start somewhere. And when you start that light, all of us know. That's why I come before you and say, do you know how much I, I know about you? I want to have a little chat by the fire with you. I love you. Because of what you've done and what you're doing. And how much you've tried. And what you've done to the duality on this planet. Listen, I'm even talking to those who don't believe me. I cherish your humanism right now. Even if you're completely in, in, in totally in disbelief, listener... I cherish your humanism to be here at the 1111 11 time and energy before the 2012 renaissance. It's why you're born. No accident you're hearing. No accident you're in the chair. That was number six. Number seven. We've given it before. Here it is again. You need to hear it. Only the old souls need to wake up in a progression that's geometric of life on the planet you can't just have old souls returning doesn't work there's got to be new ones coming from somewhere else and indeed there is there are more new ones than old ones just do the math so that means that you will never have an earth of light workers because it takes old souls to have a light worker. There has to be the experience of the Akash. Even the newbies, even some of the indigos who come in and look like they've got a lot of wisdom only have that peripheral that they're allowed that is an increase as they get here that you didn't have because of the new magnetic grid alignment. They're not old souls, not all of them. Many of them are, well, that's obvious, the ones who are and who are not. Here is the statement, the seventh cosmic law of the universe, of humanism, of this planet, is this. Only one half of one percent 
of humanity has to awaken to create peace on the planet Earth. One half of one percent. Well within the parameters of the old souls who are here. And they're the ones that when they strike their light, it will be the light of the Akash. The old souls that they are pulling up from the depths of their experience, the light to send to Sudan, to Iraq, to Palestine. And we say Palestine, meaning the entire region of what now is and is called Israel and Palestine. To those suffering around this planet who need to see things they cannot see, it is you who send the light to them. And you would say, well, why me? And I will tell you because you are also in the top 1% of the planet who does not go to bed hungry. You got free time. Have you got a minute? How about two? To give to the rest of humanity, you're in the 1111 energy and that's your number. You belong to it, dear human being, even the doubter in the room. You belong to it. Or you may not choose to join it, but you belong to it. That's why you're here. Will you give spirit two minutes before you go to bed tonight? Will you strike a light? Will you have the courage to say, I don't know where to send it. But I'll let spirit send it because it knows right where it needs to go to illuminate those places that are dark where the cosmic intelligence knows exactly what to do. That's the macro level. What about the micro level? What about striking your light for yourself and going into your own cellular structure and cleaning out the things that need to be cleaned out? What about staying on the planet a long time? What about that one? Well, even the humanity in here has no idea what's happened. There's four of you in this room who in another energy would now have passed over. Let me use another word, you'd be dead. Four of you. And that's another timeline, that's the old timeline before the harmonic convergence that had you terminate because it was time. And by your own choice and decision, four of you are here now who would not be here in the old energy. And you, one of you knows, the rest of you have no idea. Two of you know now. <laughs> Two of you have no idea. Because you didn't equate it with what took place when you could have died. One of you is having an epiphany at the moment. That was you. It was your choice. You don't ever have to fear that again. You can choose to stay, you know. And that's the light worker working with himself who chooses to stay and send light, who chooses to be healthy, who chooses to rid himself of habits he knows is hurting his health. I know who's here. Yeah, it's free choice, you know. That's all seven. You might say we were done with the chat. But I'm gonna give you something to think about. When some of you sit here and absorb the energy that I have given you with those you have allowed to be around you with free choice. You have taken upon yourself a little bit more than what you came in with and that means you're going to leave with more than you came in with. That means I cannot say goodbye because you take me home with you <laughs> and you know who you are and if you've done that and I'll always be with you. Blessed is a human being who's not afraid of the love of God. Blessed is the human being who's not afraid of change or healing in their body. Who's not afraid of crossing the bridge. Indeed, they are the meek ones who will inherit the earth and have a profound part of creating the peace that indeed we see is possible. One half of one percent, and many of them are here. And that, my dear human being, is why we love you the way we do. And so it is.